Once the evil scientist Andros invaded the Lilat system, the Age of Peace came to an end. Yet, against this backdrop of war, business is booming for one small up-and-coming mining company. Corneria Precious Metals LTD. Founded by one grippy toad, the company mines precious metals. It supplies the high demand for weapon and robot materials and makes a lot of money doing it. But lately, a worrying number of robots have begun infiltrating the company's mining locations. Long story short, that's what these here cameras are for. Keeping out rustlers. And here's the best part. You can control them all remotely right from your seat in our Corneria HQ. A wonder of technology, as little Slippy would say. Sharp as a tag, that one. I'll let you get to it. Give them bots a whooping. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and whatever else is watching. My name is Nick, and as you have guessed, I am playing Star Fox Guard. No, it's not Star Fox Zero. I did that uh, a while ago. This is Star Fox Guard. I recorded this footage uh, actually quite a while ago uh, already. Uh, I just never got around to commenting on it uh, and editing. But now I have and I wanted to do and show this because this is a fun little tower defense game that came with the first print edition of Star Fox Zero. Well you can also uh, buy it on the eShop or get a download code in the shop and whatever store you can buy and uh, you go to to buy your games. But it is a really fun game. I really think this is one overlooked game. Maybe one of the most overlooked games of this year. Uh, it is really fun and I enjoy it a lot and I must say it's well yeah, how do I do I put and put it? It's simple. But it gets everything right. This game was already announced. Um, yeah. When uh, in 2014, I think. Uh, when only then it was still called Project Guard, or was it 2015? I think it was 2015. Ah well, I can't really remember anymore. But back then it was still called Project Guard. And although there were little hints that it would be connected to uh, Star Fox, uh, it wasn't really official yet. And Nintendo was still looking at how to use it. Um, I ju Just at the right the screen, uh, I have again the gamepad and I pointed out uh, right there that uh, you can see where enemies are coming from you can see the groups of those enemies and where the most of them are are on the map and you can on the gamepad you can focus where and how to target those cameras and you can even move them around I find that a really useful feature in this game and the point is to defend the little tower, the mining tower, in the middle. Defend them from attacking bo uh, incoming bots. You have two types of bots. You have the combat and the chaos bots. Uh, this little one here is a chaos bot. Um, they are only there to... Well... Mess with the cameras. The one I just destroyed was a combat bot. They go for the mining equipment and those are also the most dangerous. Uh, if they get to your mining equipment then it will be game over and as you can see I am currently kind of ignoring uh, 
several of these combat units because unlike Star Fox uh, Zero where and this is the end I just failed yeah I let a combat bot come through and missed completely that he just walked past all my cameras in Star Fox Zero you had to watch about and you had to watch two screens one was the on the TV and one was on your gamepad in Star Fox Guard you have to watch a lot more your TV screen is actually divided up in yeah here you can see wh uh, what path uh, the robot takes but the TV screen is divided up in 13 areas 12 for each camera and the middle camera is the a of the middle uh, part is the active camera which is actually this. a lot you have to divide your focus on a, a lot of things luckily uh, the area is rather static and you have this radar map on your on your uh, gamepad that also allows you to see where uh, certain units are because the combat units are colored differently from the the actual uh, chaos units chaos units are I think yellow and the combat units are blue or did I just switch those around I hope I didn't but yeah oh don't let that one p get past but I really think this is a fun game um, I got this with the first print edition yes I got Star Fox Zero the first print, uh, print edition because it was actually a few euros more expensive than uh, the than buying each game separately would have been but I wanted to have Star Fox Guard in the well as a physical copy and with the first print edition you get Star Fox Guard as a physical copy and I just yeah I wanted to have that instead of uh, the download uh, version from the eShop that's why I also but I have to say things and I know Nintendo isn't listening but I have to get this off my chest ah this one is so cute I really like this little froggy <laughs> this mining frog oh it's great haha <laughs> When he's done, he starts singing, that's also. But to continue on, um, I have to say this. In all, in every limit, uh, when Nintendo decides the limited edition or the first print edition for Star Fox came with a physical copy of Star Fox Zero a with a, in a plastic casing and a physical copy of Star Fox Guard in a plastic casing plus a third metal casing where you can put two uh, both two uh, discs in two of those discs the metal casing looks great and it is really awesome and I have put both discs in that metal casing just because it also saves space however that leaves me with a cardboard box where both three casings in and came in and plastic casings of those Wii U games that are totally useless and I'm sorry to say this but that's completely trash at this moment I have it in the nice ca in metal casing so Nintendo please next time you decide to do a limited edition and I've seen it more often with Majora's Mask, Pandora's Tower 
we do a limited edition and Xenoblade uh, Chronicles X, I also had that one. We put the discs in the metal case. And if that is the only thing that's coming with that limited edition, leave it in the metal case and put the metal case on the shelf. Put some stickers or some uh, paper uh, printout for the for uh, the special edition, so that you uh, and you can put in the commercial uh, like stuff. Uh, how do I put this? Uh, yeah, you can put in uh, the stuff that uh, actually is uh, where you can price the game and that and that kind of stuff. Make the little pa uh, papers that you can wrap and that partially wrap around it or just at the back and at the front. Uh, put it in the, well, the usual ceiling plastic. And have that be it. Don't, don't offer the option. If I wanted to have the option, I could have bought the plastic casings as well. I could have bought that, but well, I wouldn't have a physical copy of Star Fox God, but it's just, uh, man, I really think it's a waste. And I made a mistake here by putting cameras 1 and 4 a little bit too far uh, to the back because now I'm co continuously hitting the walls. That's not a good thing, but really, put the metal casing, put it in the metal case and put those on the shelves. If you want to do a limited edition, don't package it in in a cardboard box and then have oh, camera one, yes, camera one, but don't package it with. Well, don't leave me with so much trash. Because frankly... The trash is... Oh, and I just forgot that, that the combat units have to be shot with twice. And even though I tried, I still failed. Yeah, the combat units you have to shoot twice. They... Uh, you have a top part and a bottom part that you have to kill. Well, let's try again, eh? But this is this is what I think Nintendo, please don't do this anymore. Just don't leave me with such a big pile of trash. Oh my poor face! I have now two useless Wii U casings that I have no clue of what to do with. Three actually, because I also bought a Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, the for uh, for that one uh, I also bought a limited edition with a mit metal casing in it. And it's just yeah, it's it's a waste and. No, I don't think that that was a good idea. Nintendo, be more mindful. I won't, don't say this often, or do, I don't want to say this. But if you want to be mindful of the environment, that is one part you can start with. Don't leave us with so much trash. And I forgot to put the camera 10 and 11 back to their original spots. Um, on the other hand, going getting back to this game, as you can see uh, also in the previous attempt, the next mission added some n new chaos bots. We have smoke screens now, and they can be obnoxious. So keep those things out of your base because they block your camera and your radar. Yeah, like that one. But 
I think this game is really fun. And even though the Star Fox people are only here in here for a cameo, it doesn't even contain the R-Wing. Uh, well, the R-Wing se uh, sections and all those uh, other... What you're used of from the Star Fox. It doesn't even contain the regular... Uh, how do I put it? The... The regular... Uh, ooh, I was successful! Well, it doesn't uh, contain even regular Star Fox people. Well, this is a completely spin-off. Completely other setting. Uh, even the setting is different. Well, the game style is different. I do think this game offers a good expansion of the Star Fox universe. Even when they decided again that they had to start over. Which they are doing quite a lot with Star Fox. Not really fun, uh, enjoyable, but I think this really expands uh, a universe. And that's why I don't think... I don't think spin-offs like this, even if fans are actually screaming for another sequel, Metroid. Sorry, had to do that. I don't think that uh, spin-offs or just other titles that have a different style or a different thing are bad. Sometimes uh, I hear things, uh, it's not the g title we want, uh, this is a spin-off, this is a side, uh, side story, this is not what we want, but I think Ooh, I had a perfect guard here. Nice. But, in all honesty, I think it's... Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, it actually expands the universe. The universe... You had with Zelda, you have the Dingle games. Really fun games. No, or you no, even no, had Link's crossbow trading. And you have and the Mario franchises. Mario had a dozen of spin-offs. And now it's pretty much any Mario title where one of the Mario characters is in the main lead is already considered a Mario Mario title. So I think yeah, th in this game even gives a good nice expansion on the Star Wars u universe and the gameplay is awesome this game is fun it is a lot of fun and that is what is also the strength of this game and yeah I can go on uh, even more but What's to say about this that then that, that I really enjoy playing this game. However, this is not the only game I have, so uh, unfortunately it has to sh share that uh, spot with uh, uh, still Star Fox Zero, still Ratchet and Clank, still Xenoblade Chronicles. Yes, I'm also playing that still. Uh, still Twilight Princess, also. Bravely Second, I'm also playing that. Uh, currently Hyrule Warriors Legends. Oh man, the list is getting too long. Especially now Tokyo Mirage Sessions has added. Man, so many games to play. Owning a Nintendo system di this year is... Hasn't been let me down any in any way. I think... I'm really looking forward to a next half year having less titles coming up and that allows me to play the titles that I already have. Hey that's it for this episode. I thank you for watching and if you have any thoughts then leave them in the comments below. I invite you to view my other work if you enjoyed this video. You can go there by clicking on the links on the screen or in the description below. Or you can check out my channel. However, for now, I say goodbye and see you later.